Okay, well, thank you very much for joining me. Um, I have here uh, Luke Thompson from the Luke. <laughs> Luke English Hello. Podcast, is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you for joining. And also we have here Eric, Eric Wesh from Etiquette. Is Am I pronouncing it well? I mean, Etiquette is perfect. Hi, Cathy. Thank you so much for having for having me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Both of you are so kind. Okay, well, first I would like to, uh, maybe you can help me because you already know me and we are, you know, like so excited to have Luke here. So maybe some questions are going to be about him for the first time, okay? So my very first say is related to your, I mean, your main activity. You are, you know, a podcaster. Can I say mm -hmm. that, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I see that you are, you know, doing a great job. How come, I mean, how did you get involved into this podcasting? In podcasting? Oh, long time ago. So actually, I, I first started getting into it. Well, I used to listen to a lot of podcasts and I still do. And then uh, I used to work at a school in London called the London School of English. And they gave me and a couple of other teachers special responsibilities for certain things. And the special responsibility I had was about um, using technology in teaching. And uh, podcasting was one of the things that we were interested in looking at. So they actually paid for me to take a course in podcasting with an online company called The Consultants E. And I took a course with them. It was back in, God, well, 2008, 2009, I think. And it was all about how podcasts work, how to make podcasts, uh, what are different file types, you know, all the basics of podcasting and applying that to teaching English. At the time, the idea was that we would use podcasts in class somehow, oh. that it would be part of student projects, that the students would be the ones recording the podcasts and it would be like class projects. Okay. And that, ne that idea never really took off, I think, because these, these were in the days when podcasts was, was sort of like, you know, emerging and with people wondering how to use them. That yeah. was around 2000, 2008, 2008, 2009. That's, that's, I think when I was doing that course, it was only a short course, sort of like a online thing. Um, and after talking to my colleagues about this idea of using them in class, we decided that that probably wasn't the best way to use podcasts. And um, basically myself, I decided, I think I'm going to start my own podcast. That's what I thought, because I thought, because um, I just always wanted to have my own radio show. Okay. I always wanted to be, I kind of, I had, although I was a teacher, I also had aspirations to do something like broadcasting. Uh, my dad, my dad worked for the BBC for many years. And Whoa. so I just feel like it's in my blood or something like that. Yeah, and uh, your voice, even your voice, you know, also got Eric, that kind of, you have this kind of voice, you know, that is deep, you know, and also that maybe you, you sort of inhabit the character because when you speak, it's like, you know, like natural or something, you know, continue, please. I don't want to interrupt. Presentation skills, I think is kind of, I, I learned it from teaching, you know, maybe I sort of picked things up from listening to my dad talking about the way news readers do their work and stuff like that. But I think I learned it from teaching because you learn how to use your voice. Um, and also just in things like presenting texts every now and then I'd have to read out a text. So I'd get my students to read them out but I'd read them out too. And I just realized that I really enjoyed reading out these texts and sort of bringing them to life and showing where the pauses were and, uh, and stuff like that. And, and it was fun. Also, I do comedy too. I do stand up. Yeah, that's right. I am amazed. Can you imagine that, Eric? You know, I actually, I found this guy, Paul Taylor, because of mm. you. Mm -hmm. Because I Google it, you know, and I found <laughs> this is so funny. And you were with him. Yeah, he's a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. We, oh. we, I mean, it's a long story. I don't want to go on about myself too much. But um, so what I was saying about the comedy was that uh, that's another thing that I feel kind of has managed to, I, I, you know, I was doing teaching, I was doing stand up comedy sometimes in the evenings. And the podcast actually was a chance to do both of those things at the same time. Because you can, you know, it was about teaching, but also about being 
a bit more lighthearted and a bit more fun. So the podcast was just a natural thing for, for me to do. So, yeah, but Paul, I met Paul in Paris because I moved to Paris in 2012 and there was a little scene, a little English language stand-up comedy scene. And Paul was one of the other comedians that was there. And he was English too, and he still is. <laughs> and um, so we naturally became friends and stuff. And, and, you know, he was on my podcast quite a lot uh, as a regular guest and stuff. And, and also he was working on becoming a comedian. He, he gave up his job at Apple. He had a really good job there, but he decided, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try and become a stand-up. Whoa. So he gave up his job and he totally went for it and it worked. He made a video which went viral, the video about kissing the way French people kiss. <laughs> right? It was you know, a huge... it's, it's famous, you know, the French kiss. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there's the French kiss, which I think is a, another thing. But when <laughs> French people, just like I guess in, in South America and many other countries, when people meet, they kiss each other on the cheeks. Uh -huh. We don't do that in England. So no. anyway, Paul made a video about how it's really confusing and weird for English people. And he totally <laughs> broke down the culture of French people kissing each other. And it went, it was a huge success. And anyway, he, he, he became sort of famous. Um, and then that led to him getting his own TV show and stand up show and stuff. So, but I, I found him first. <laughs> Play that <That's> game. <laughs> you know what? In, in, in Argentina, where I live, it is typical that men kiss. Can you believe that? Yeah. When yeah. my husband went to Ecuador to meet my family, because I am from Ecuador, he, you know, when, when, when he said hi, he went kissing you know men you know and they were like what <laughs> you know because it's not the usual yeah you know? don't do that in england i don't know what about south africa do, do people kiss south on africa the... how yeah about no that? um i guess no it doesn't happen in south africa at all uh, i guess sometimes if if your family is very kissy but it's very <laughs> unlikely very you wouldn't, highly unlikely like at a french party right when you leave the party you have to kiss all the people that you've spoken to Otherwise, it's rude. You have to be like, oh, well, bye-bye, and I'm going now, bye. And then you kiss everyone. And you kiss them at the beginning. Hi, you kiss. Hi, Luke. You've never met them before. And, and you're, you're kissing them and telling them your name as you're doing it. And, I mean, it's normal. It's just culture. But for an English person or maybe a South African or someone who doesn't normally do that, that's quite strange. So, something interesting I heard is, uh, so sometimes, you know, let's say you go to a party and you just want to slip away, you know. So you greet everyone when you get there. But in Western culture, it's almost acceptable you say goodbye to the host and maybe you can slip away instead of saying goodbye to everyone. Whereas mm -hmm. uh, um, I had a French friend and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically it's, it's, it's very rude if you leave without saying goodbye to yeah. everyone there. Yeah. But you know what they call it as well? Saying goodbye without leaving, uh, saying, leaving without saying goodbye. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, the American way, the American <laughs> way to say goodbye. Is that it? Sub like that? Well, they call it uh, doing in English or uh, fila l'anglaise, <laughs> which is like the English uh, exit. Right, but, which that's is, what it was. <laughs> it's odd because in England we call that a French exit. Oh. Leaving without saying goodbye for us is a French exit. So I, I don't know. I don't know who's right <laughs> and who's not right. But uh, certainly, yes, uh, it's normal to like discreetly, well, bye, I'm off now. You say goodbye to the guest, maybe a few other people, then you go. Whereas in France, that's considered a bit rude. And yes, that's yeah. fila l'anglaise or. Um, you know, an, an English exit, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, well, by now it's maybe difficult because we are online, so we, we shouldn't kiss each other, you know. But you know what? You know what? Um, I was thinking while you were talking about this, uh, this thing to, to be like a bit more uh, emphasizing or maybe to inhabit the character you know and to talk like that you know mm. because sometimes you need to 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 encourage your students and to make them feel you know less bored maybe you know to get engaged so in this you know in this moment I would like to hear some of uh, Eric, because Eric, I don't know if you know him, but I would like Eric maybe tell Luke something about what you are doing because he's more like a teacher for teachers, you know, it's something like that, you know. So mm. please, Eric, introduce yourself to Luke. Well, I think it's much different than, than you, Luke, Luke, where you started off and you had this, um, you know, you've, you had this dream of 
you know, being a presenter, being on radio. Uh, whereas for myself, I've, I've, I've been very shy in front of the camera and, um, you know, I hated my voice. And then um, I, I was just a normal teacher. I, I was just a normal teacher. And, uh, and I, I, I saw this opportunity that, you know, I was, I was teaching ESL in Korea and there, there weren't any good resources out there. You know, I had to scramble to find things and, and there weren't any YouTube channels for teachers. And I thought, you know what, um, let's just try it, make some videos of activities that teachers can use. And then, um, yeah, I, I just started a YouTube channel. It's, it's still very, it's in its infancy. I've only been doing it a year. Uh, I knew nothing about editing or, you know, making videos. And I've just enjoyed it so much just to help. It's, Whereas, it's, yeah, yeah, it's going really well, though, I, I understand, right? I, I, I really enjoy it. And I've got, uh, I, I love staying busy with all these projects. But you know what? I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in your side with, with the podcast because you got into this 2008 at a really good time. And I still mm. don't think podcasts have made it, uh, they're not as big as they should be. And I think a lot of companies have taken notice with, I see with, uh, well, the Joe Rogan deal with Spotify and all these yeah. other companies pushing it hard. I think podcasts um, are still going to grow so much. So I think it's so interesting that you're doing that. Yeah, I mean, like a, a lot of people go into podcasts as a, a means to an end. You know, they, mm -hmm. they do a podcast in order to then go on to do something else. And I've, I think I've worked out that this is it. I don't want to do anything else. Um, I mean, maybe some things like some other projects and some stand up stuff, maybe, but actually I'm just so, I just love doing the podcast so much that I'm happy to continue. I, I, I wish more teachers did this, you know, where, where you had this dream, you said this, this isn't enough. You know, I enjoy teaching and I'm learning a lot from it. I'm practicing skills like performing in front of the class, reading and helping our students do things. But you had this side hustle, this dream. And I feel like a lot of teachers that I've spoken to, they forget the book they wanted to write. They forget, they forget about, you know, some of the things they wanted to do as some traveling or with family mm. or some projects. Mm. And, uh, and I, I wish more teachers um, it would fulfill them as teachers if they also focused on the, they spend some time on these side hustles. Unfortunately, today's modern world, um, you know, it doesn't allow everyone to do that, but we need to keep those dreams alive. I think the, the, the advantage of doing the podcast in a way, like now I, I'm, I'm lots of years into it and I've done lots of episodes. And when I look back at all of it, it's like actually a lot of work. But the thing is about doing a podcast, you just focus on the next episode and then the next episode and you just do it bit by bit and then it slowly grows. But I guess for, for a lot of teachers who do have like side hustles or other projects that they want to work on, it can be quite intimidating because you think it's hard to write a book because it's this huge thing you've got to do. Um, but breaking it down into little pieces definitely, definitely helps. And I guess, you know, I know loads of teachers who've got lots of other things they want to do. Um, but it can be hard to, to get started. But uh, yeah, just, just sort of breaking it up into bits is, is a useful way of doing it. I, I think we're fortunate. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, you do have the, those go-getters that go out and try and their best. But um, I think for some of us, we're fortunate if we get that extra push. And some people just need that, that push. Uh, for me, it came, um, I spoke about starting a YouTube channel for, for years, actually. And then uh, an ex-girlfriend at the time said, Eric, I found this. You, you're always talking about this. Here's a camera I found online. Let's buy it and just start. And I said, okay. And uh, I, I bought the camera and I was like, okay, well, I've, I've got, got it now. No more excuses. I got to start. And I started. And I think perhaps for you, did it come when, when the school said, listen, you've got to take this course? Or was there some other time that you felt this is where it started. Two things. So the one thing was definitely the school saying, take this course. We, you know, we you might be able to use those skills in the special responsibility. I ended up using them for myself because the, I did actually record a couple of podcasts for my school and the, the man, the director of the school was like, mm, not the kind of thing I had in mind because I think they wanted a much more slick kind of BBC style thing. And I, I went in another direction in a more sort of, you know, improvisational personal thing. But anyway, so I was like, okay, if you don't want it, I'll do it myself. The other thing was actually a girl again. And uh, that was when I, that was, that was the thing that got me to do comedy. 
so I'd always wanted to do comedy and I do feel like they're all kind of mixed in with the same thing like you know the podcasting stuff the comedy the teaching for me it's all sort of mixed up together not that I'm a showman in the classroom you know because you're not supposed to do that, are you? <laughs> anyway maybe. but it was a girl who's who said I, I really want to do comedy and she was like you should do this this comedy workshop that I know and she kind of gave me the shove in that direction mm. <laughs> but um yeah so I should probably say I'm not we're not together anymore <laughs> but but still thanks <laughs> Grateful to her. yeah definitely yeah. I, I feel exactly the same if it wasn't for that person at that point in our lives and uh, maybe we wouldn't be where we are now yeah yeah exactly. yeah that's right and you know what um I, you know there are two people from the chat box that would like to join now okay and please okay. help me you know telling them something like a uh, something uh, inspiring maybe something because they they are in love with you okay i'm going to Ooh. yeah they are in love with you they, they really like what you do so okay here we have domi hello domi hello hello, hello domi. Baby. can you imagine who i got here <laughs> hello roberta how are you <laughs> A little bit nervous, <laughs> as you can imagine. Hello, Roberta. <laughs> Hi, Luke. Hi, Hi Eric. Hi, Roberta. <laughs> oh, my <Amy>. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my dear friends. Uh, this is why I make these kind of meetings, okay? First of all, it's because uh, we, are, we are so engaged with English, you know, that we are self-learners, okay? We, we, we are PIP, P-I-P, as one of our amazing teachers from the chat box said, proactive, inquisitive, and patient <laughs> uh, learners, okay? That's great, yeah. Yeah, he, he said that, it's a Ben Jill. we love him. <laughs> okay, and we have the opportunity in the chat box to meet our beloved teachers, you know? And this is one of these moments that I cherish, you know, the most. Hmm. And now I don't want to speak more. I don't want to say anything else because I want my students to say something. My students, no, the members of the chat box. <laughs> okay, uh, Domi, good, please go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm so glad to meet you, Luke and uh, Eric. I have known Luke for quite a long time now. And recently I met Eric on YouTube with his splendid videos. So um, may I say something to each of you? Yeah, please, please. Just go. a comment about what, yeah. uh, what are my feelings. Okay, okay. Sure. my go, feelings. Go. Okay, so... Uh, Luke, I enjoy a lot your podcast, of course, for their varied content. Um, I will speak more specifically, maybe about when your mom comes around. I love when your mom comes around and she <laughs> speaks about um, English books because I, I think she runs a book club. Am I right? She has a book club with her friends. Uh, uh, that's right. She also works in a bookshop and okay. she's surrounded by books all the time. Yes, yeah, so can she's... we join for book club? <laughs> <laughs> that would be lovely, but I'm afraid it's uh, it's not online. It's in the real world. It's um, you know, it's it takes place in in living rooms uh, in in England. So I'm afraid so maybe um, soon, maybe so hopefully soon. <laughs> yes, yes, maybe you'll have to move to England and get to make friends with all of them, and uh, okay. it might take a while. <laughs> Anything's possible. Yes, <laughs> that would be nice. That that would be lovely because she's an expert, and I enjoy so much her recommendation because I think that she knows your audience. She knows that you are English learners, so um, uh, I suspect her to make a selection for us. You know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, when you are a for you know, when you learn, learn a foreign language. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be able to read a, a book written in that language. So that's what I like to have recommendation about native English 
writers, you know, to have nobody between the writer and the reader, to be really in the contact with the original text. That's what I like. Yeah, and yeah. that's what I like with your mom, because she gives recommendation about native English uh, writers. But not always, because she, she also talks about a Russian recently. Yeah, but uh, that was written, that book, um, I've got it here somewhere. Um, um, a Gentleman in Moscow, I a think. A Gentleman in Moscow. This, this, yeah. Yes, look, 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 Roberta's got it as well. <laughs> um, so this is, the, this is the most recent book that we talked about. Yes. Mm -hmm. I also talked to my dad about his book, but anyway, that's another yes. story. So, yes, uh, but this is the book, but it's written by Amor Tolls, who's actually an American. Oh, so it's cool. about a Russian character, but it's oh, yes. written by an American. An American. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's a native English writer. Okay. Yeah. So I, I will put it on my list as well. Okay. We, we've got, um, uh, we're planning to do another one actually fairly soon. Oh, great. Shall great. I tell you what the, the book's going to be? <clears throat> it's called, it's, it's called one, two, three, four. And it's about the Beatles. Oh, great. It's a okay. book, a, a book that's, that was released, I guess, about a year ago, and it's sort of become a real success. Lots of people have talked about it. It takes a kind of a fresh, interesting look at the story of the Beatles. So that's what we're going to do, because I'm wonderful. a huge fan, that's and my mum was a huge fan. She saw them live twice <laughs> yes anyway I was as well i was as well a fan yeah. of the beatles and, yeah. and i i heard you talking about paul and he's uh, making uh, out uh, from his kitchen and, <laughs> and that, that was interesting as well yeah. and um so i enjoy i enjoy to have the um, recommendation of your mom and uh, i wanted also to talk to you about the format of your uh, podcast because to have a long lasting podcast is really interesting you know when you have boring chores to do <laughs> like mm -hmm. all housewives have maybe it's a bit super superficial <laughs> as a comment but i'm sure that a lot of listeners uh, react like like i do we we like to have long lasting podcasts during those boring chores you know those annoying like when you're peeling vegetables when you're ironing when you're dusting well it helps it helps a lot <laughs> it makes our task more uh more bearable yes more bearable <laughs> yes yes it's yes, very yes, nice yes. to very nice to hear that domi because um um you know you assume as an english teacher and eric you probably like comment on this that as English teachers, we don't want to overwhelm our students, you know, and, and certainly in podcasting, the, the wisdom is that the accepted wisdom is that it should be about 15 minutes or something like the BBC's podcast is six minutes. Six, yes. and shorter is better. Less is more. Effective. And you can't give people too much. But actually, I just sort of decided to just ignore that and just to do really long yes. episodes. Yes. But it's, uh, I'm sure that some people can't listen to all of it. But there are enough people who, who are but you happy can, to I've, listen. I've got a question, Luke. So yeah. I, think, I think it's fantastic to go that long because I can see, as Domi said, you know, a lot of people really like listening to long podcasts, especially if it's with someone that they enjoy listening to and someone they feel a connection with. But I've seen that a lot of other podcasts have made channels where they put out shorter clips, you know, they edit out the clips. Um, I, I'm not sure. Do you do that for your, uh, for your podcast too? No, because I just haven't been able to do it. I haven't had the time, but I've, I've actually, when was it? I, I recently, I did go through, I started the project. I went through a lot of old episodes and took out clips, short clips, and I've got a folder on my computer full of short clips, and I, I'm hoping to post them somewhere, somehow. Maybe I'll make YouTube videos of just little clips. Again, like the Joe, Joe Rogan podcast, they do exactly. that. They do, there's, there's a, a YouTube channel called J are clips and it's just like little clips from from his episodes i, I really hope you do that because uh, i've seen a number of podcasts do this for example valuetainment i don't know if you've seen that they also bring out shorter clips mm. um and yeah it's so useful because you know perhaps someone like domi would love to listen to the whole thing but somebody else might just want these short clips so i yeah. hope you do that mm, i must i must do that <laughs> so anyway you're brighton all the first use task we have every day you know so it and all, and also when you are walking outside 
when you have a long walk, it's nice to listen to a long podcast as well. And if the podcast is short, when you open your phone, you see nothing on your screen because the sunlight, um, you, it, it is not manageable. So yeah. you pick up another podcast. So I like long lasting podcasts. It depends on the time of the day, you see short mm -hmm. in the morning and long for my fastidious task yeah. <laughs> so don't That's shorten right. your podcast please, <laughs> okay 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 thank you <laughs> okay so do you do you want to talk to luke before roberta or shall i no, no, you can you, you can con continue go, okay. go with I, go, eric. I go on yeah. with eric so <laughs> for eric it's different because there are videos but for me eric you are a a good complement to Luke podcast because with Luke I practice my listening skills I collect a lot of new words new vocabularies and with you I practice my speaking with all the games the fabulous games you're talking about I practice with your games they're not only for children I think children maybe children teachers they enjoy because there are a, a lot of good ideas in your uh, videos um, but for adults, it works as well. And I spot out one of your games, which is and then. I love that game, and then. You see, you know, you start a conversation, two or three sentences, and you say, and then. And someone else takes the floor and say, and then. And you make it more spicy because you write on the board the words you want people incorporate in their talking so that's the great way to make the situation when you learn new vocabularies and everybody knows that they vanish away if you don't practice but how can you make the situation that was the tricky point for me and i find out that from you eric that's <laughs> a genius idea to play games like that and i will play that with my uh chatbox friends you know and then and then and then we incorporate we could incorporate words or idioms or anything you want to fix in your mind you see so that's a great idea thank you eric <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting for more games. <laughs> Is that like a storytelling game? Is that the idea? Exactly. It's like that. It's a, it's actually um, it comes from you know when you what is it when you do acting? Uh, a, a, uh, what is it called? You know, a sta not stand up when you it, actually act out. It comes from role plays. It comes from plays. from role plays. Yeah. And um, Domi, I've I, I think it's it's so interesting. Most of these games that I find. If I can imagine myself and my students enjoying it, I think this has to go out there. I, I need to tell people about it. So every time I find interesting games, I just put it out there. And I, um, hopefully December, I've got a bunch of new games coming out. So I hope I can share this. <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, Roberta, please, it's now your time to talk. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, I don't have uh, more to add to what Domi has just said. I just want to say that uh, this is incredible for me to be here um, because, and I've never, uh, I have never imagined to say one day, hi Luke, with you in <laughs> front of me because Hello. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I'm a big fan of your podcast and. Um, I love your rambling conversations, and uh, yes, I have a soft, a soft spot for your parents too. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is incredible to be here. Um, I mean, with all of you, because uh, as Katie and Domi know, I'm a very shy person, and um, I don't feel uh, comfortable at all in front of the camera. I think and it's the I first think, time, right? It's the first time that you yes, went into the camera. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah and I yeah, think yeah. Eric can relate to that um, mm -hmm. uh, because I watched your interview with Katie last time and uh, you had the same experience. Uh, but I think, um, I, I truly believe that um, it's worth pushing uh, challenging ourselves uh, sometimes um, in order to improve ourselves and to experience new things. 
Yes, I agree. I mean, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, if we keep doing the same thing, things, we get to the same results, the same experience. It's quite boring. Uh, mm -hmm. So what do you think? Uh, or do you have some tips to overcome uh, shyness or fear of speaking? Uh, because I know there are a lot of students, a lot of learners, uh, who maybe have uh, an advanced level, English level, but they don't feel really confident to, to speak uh, with other people. So, Eric, what do you mm -hmm. think? Roberta, you said that, you know, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, you can grow by pushing yourself into uncomfortable situations. Like you said, this is the first time you're on camera, but I think it's, I think it's more than that. I think you're actually robbing people from your experience. Like right now I look at you and I think you look, you sound amazing on camera. You're so photogenic <laughs> and you've been robbing people of your experience for so long and i think you should be ashamed and you need to be more on camera just to push out so um with my students i like to give them confidence because i think they they need uh, that they they are robbing other people from their experience and they should yes they should be pushing themselves but yes they've got so much to offer and i think as humans we're not living our, our true lives if if we're not showing people who we really are and what we I, can do. that's great and I totally agree with what Eric said. And it makes me think of, again, stand-up comedy. Keep talking about this. But um, for the one thing that has, has helped me a lot in doing stand-up, so obviously that is pretty stressful at times when you're going up in front of people and you have to make them laugh every 10 seconds or something like that. And you can get trapped in a mindset where you, where you, you feel like you're trying to get their approval. Okay, you're trying to get their acceptance. And it's kind of a bad uh, way of thinking about it. The best way is to think that you're giving things to them rather than trying to get things from them. And it's just like what Eric said, you're essentially, if you, if you don't do it, you're robbing other people of, of, uh, of the nice experience of seeing you and listening to you. And that's the best way to think about it, that we're offering things to people. We're not trying to get things from people. And if you try and yeah. keep that in mind, it, it helps you feel a little bit less nervous. The pressure's not on you. It's not about, oh, am I going to do all right? Um, you know, am I going to uh, get the approval of, of these people? It doesn't matter. You're just giving things to them. People don't judge you as much as, as you expect. 100%. Yeah, um, I, I think, you know, once you're in front of people, when you first start out, you, you feel judged. But um, if, if you realize that you're not being judged, these people are just looking at you and you are free to say and do anything. Um, you... you, you are able to do so many great things. Yeah, so don't feel judged, just feel like you're, you're sharing part of yourself with people and that will open yourself, that will open you up. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, um, I can, yes, uh, I mean, um, I get rid uh, of the fear of mistakes because that was uh, the most biggest thing that you prevent you from having conversations so the fear of mistakes but when you focus on communication and on making friends online and sharing experiences and so on so i think that's uh, the most important thing so yes when, when i first started teaching i was really nervous in front of classes of students I felt so uncomfortable. Uh, I didn't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I didn't know where to, how to stand. I didn't know what to do with my body when I was talking to them. I just felt so nervous. I, my, I remember my first lesson, I was perched on the edge of a table in a really, I wasn't sitting on the table. I wasn't standing. I was kind of like half on the table in a really awkward, uncomfortable position. And I, and I didn't know what to do with my hands and I couldn't like, it was, it was horrible right and the only thing that helped me relax was just teaching just doing it again and again and again and again and again and eventually somehow you just learn to relax i still feel uncomfortable and nervous i still feel a little awkward in front of a camera so it's totally normal but i think practice i mean mm -hmm. you know as well as just like changing your mindset and stuff a lot of it is just about practice and just doing it as much as possible and and then that that helps just practice 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 
Do you know why experience, uh, why experience helps you open up and become more conf confident in front of students? No. Um, well, the first thing I said that uh, when you're in front of people, you feel like you're being judged. But the more you do it, you are basically telling your mind that, listen, I'm standing in front of these kids. I'm teaching them. Nothing bad is happening to me. So what I would say is change your physiology. Um, if you're in front of a crowd, open up your body language. Uh, your body language will tell your mind, listen, you're standing there. Nothing bad is happening to you. What's the worst that's going to happen? Someone's going to say boo. <laughs> no, there's nothing bad that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And Throw then tomatoes, uh, I would mate. actually... Mm, <laughs> yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Lovely tomatoes. Thank you. Yeah. And so, so you, nothing bad's going to happen. And uh, the more you tell your brain that, the, the more comfortable you will become in front of people. And um, one thing I tell my students, uh, I was actually doing presentations today, and it's this talented young lady. She comes out and she does a great presentation. The only mistake is she rushes through it. She's like, blah, 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 so quickly. And I said, um, I remember this is her name, just blank it out if it's bad. I said, Minju, you know what? You are so great, but you are important. Take your time. So what I tell my students is your time is important. If you are going to do a speech in front of people, take a couple of seconds, breathe in and wait. Wait, great. Mm -hmm. but I, I, I and then say jump that into it. I'm oh, sorry. It's different from being in front of the pupils in a classroom because I used to be a teacher and I remember at first I was shy as well and I could overcome with time. But in front of the camera in um, Zoom meetings, it's different. It's another kind of intimidation. It's intimidating as well to have Zoom meetings and it's different from being in a classroom. I'm, I'm less experienced of, uh, at doing videos and things uh, than Eric is. Mm. And uh, I'm still kind of getting used to doing things in front of a camera. I'm more comfortable just doing normal Zoom classes, like all my classes now to adults are on Zoom these days. Uh, but do, when I'm doing my videos or if I'm videoing an episode of my podcast, I do feel a bit uncomfortable. It takes some getting used to. It's weird. Yeah. Just like this, it's like you know, mm -hmm. 2001 A Space Odyssey. Mm -hmm. And look at you, know you. The, <laughs> you know that film in, on the with screen, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you can see yourself on the screen, yeah. and there's just like this yeah. eye looking at you. This good morning, Dave. You, know, <laughs> you, you, you seem a little uncomfortable, Dave. You know, that sort of feeling it's a bit unnerving just looking at this cold, like camera. Um, I don't know, Eric, have you uh, how do you do that? I mean, you, you, you're very good at it. Uh, well, it's funny. Um, I went and I, I watched an old video of mine, uh, just a year old, and I went back and I uh, and I and I looked at myself and I thought, "Well, this is horrible." <laughs> this, 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 I, I was standing there just looking into the screen, and I was so <laughs> awkward. And you, you could, I'm, I'm totally different right now. I still don't think I'm, I'm as, uh, I'm as good as I could possibly be, but I feel more comfortable in my own skin. And I, I guess it does come down to experience. Once again, I just, I feel more comfortable because I've, I've done it a few times and I know nothing bad's going to happen to me. Maybe there will be an awkward angle, but that's, that's the worst thing that's going to happen to me. And um, I mean, we've, human beings are amazing. We've learned so many things, you know, and this is just one more thing that at first it's going to be a little awkward, but the more we do it, um, the better we're going to become. Yeah, mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. I, I want to say something, you know, I love singing. When I was a, a teenager, you know, I used to sing in a band, okay, and we were, we were, you know, supposed to sing in front of a lot of people. Some, uh, even one day we went into a theater, a big theater, you know, and it was a huge amount of people in front of me. Of course, the lights were off. It, the spotlight was on me and I was supposed to start singing. And you can imagine myself, I was 16 years old and I was like this. No, let me, I was like this. <laughs> Like this, you know, the, the, yeah. all, you know, like this, my hand like this, like this, like, you know, 
my hand couldn't couldn't stop. I couldn't stop moving my head, you know. And when I started singing, you know, it was a beautiful song. It was supposed to be like only me and the piano, okay? And then um, the the band were like boom started in 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 after the first. Uh, part of the song, singing only me and the piano. And the spotlight came in and I stand, I, I was sitting, in, in one moment I was sitting and I stood up and all the theater went into a standing ovation wow. in the beginning of the song, you know? It was mm. almost the beginning of the song. You know, I was almost crying because I felt so, so, emotional you know and I continue singing of course and then it was beautiful but I understood in that moment I was 16 years old and I understood that it was exactly as Luke said and also Eric you know that is not that you are of course this was this was a, a huge feedback imagine right but but I was singing, I was given my vest, right, in this moment. And, and I forgot that it was all about having this standing ovation. It was because I love singing. I love singing and I was giving my best. And, and you know, and, and then it was fine, you know. It was a beautiful, but my hand was like this all the time. <laughs> oh my God. For me, when I get nervous, my, my neck goes all stiff, so I, I'm... <laughs> like my early days of teaching were like yes what do you think <laughs> what do you think lots of that so just try, and, try and relax a bit uh, but that's very interesting yes you focused on giving you know just performing your song uh, and if you try and think like that then that just helps rather than like oh I need to make sure that they like me instead you just focus on doing what you're doing and just trying to give something to them yeah yeah. I've got one thing I want to say. Um, have you noticed, you know, sometimes when you were at school, there were some girls or some boys that just took to the limelight and they just loved being in front of the class or they would stand up and they would sing and everybody would look at them and, you know, give them applause. And then, but the majority of students, they hated speaking in front of groups. And um, I was thinking about this, you know, it's, it's definitely the experiences we have as children that actually follows us for the rest of our lives. You know, I, I think something happened in some of these kids' lives where they had this positive reinforcement of, oh, you sang so well, you're doing so well in front of people, do it more. And in their minds, a switch goes off that says, standing in front of people, performing equals praise, equals um you know, people looking at me, uh, liking me. And for a, a, a few students, that's what happened to them at a young age. And they just love being in front of people. So we assume that it's just because they're extroverted, which it, they might be, but that somewhere in their lives, something changed. Whereas with the majority of us, maybe something happened where we see our oh, standing in front of people that might equal shame. Mm. And it, it, it can take a lifetime to get that out of our heads. It can take a lifetime. So what I would what I would say is with my students, if they're in front, I am their biggest supporter, I'm their biggest cheerleader. But not everybody has a teacher like that. We have to be our own cheerleaders and say, listen, this is the best thing that's going to happen to you. You need to be that source of positive reinforcement to make that switch go on and um, you know share what you can. So I, I just wanted to say that we need to be our own yeah, cheerleaders at some point that's too. that's fantastic to hear because i mean you know in teaching in schools there's so much assessment and also teachers have to focus on crowd control you know making sure that the yeah. kids the kids are, are behaving right mm -hmm. and i guess in so many cases the teachers just stuck in this sense of like i've got to maintain discipline and there's a lot of negative feedback and stuff a lot of um Mm. Yeah, disciplining the kids. And so, yeah, maybe those early experiences are just within this context. And there's a lot of judgment and, and it's not necessarily the best conditions for producing great, confident public speakers in the future. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. totally. Can I ask you, uh, 
another question. Uh, talking mm -hmm. about challenges, um, what was one of your biggest challenges uh, you faced and in the end you were happy and proud to, to have faced because uh, so rewarding and not necessarily related to teaching or learning but uh, your life? Going to another um, country, I mean, moving to another country or whatever. Still, still attempting to deal with that particular challenge. <laughs> like, you know, with the French language and all the cultural differences. I mean, it's very boring, but I'll say stand up again because that's probably the, the best example I can think of at this moment. My first gig and just the, those feelings of nerves and all that stuff. And then but preparation was the thing that helped. So I felt terribly nervous because I was about to perform in front of a big room of people and try and make them laugh and all that stuff. And I had my material and, but preparation was the thing Re like preparing, repeating my, my, uh, my set again and again and again. And, um, and just, yeah, just making sure I knew all of the things I was going to say and mentally thinking to myself, it doesn't matter. It's not the end of the world if people don't laugh and just doing that and then when i actually finally got to the stage i relaxed and let the practice do the work so just preparation for do me you was still do that luke do you still act do you um still so i wouldn't say it's acting it's not really acting it's stand-up comedy so it's you're not really i mean you it can involve being someone else but most of the time you're being yourself and you're telling what appears to be true stories or jokes about your life and stuff like that. So yeah, I still do that as much as I can. Can't do it now. because No, COVID. I, I imagine you can't, right? You can't now. Yeah. No, I'm you still do doing that, it now. You do that it, in Paris? In, in a, in a yeah. theater in Paris? Yeah, yeah like, um, like, uh, like the way Paul does. So um, yeah, they're, they're not in, in normal circumstances, there are shows in English that you okay. can do. So I don't have my own show but there are uh, shows that are run by other people and they have like maybe four or five comedians on the show. So each person does 10 or 15 minutes each. So you get like 10 minutes and then the host comes back for two minutes and then another 10 minutes of someone else. So I do that whenever I can, not as much as I would like to these days, but um, yeah, it's still, still happening. <laughs> Great. Uh, um, look, is there a possibility that I can also meet uh, Paul for, for the chat box? You can try, but he's, uh, he's quite difficult to get hold of these days. Oh, okay. uh, just because he's, uh, you know, he's kind of success, famous, famous, oh, yeah, that, famous man that's now. Why. That's right. But you know what? He, he has this fuck with English or fuck the, <laughs> fuck the fuck the fuck the French or something like that I love well, it it's actually called what the fuck France oh what the fuck like what France, the fuck yeah. France <laughs> which is yeah quite quite a rude title but the French don't mind French people don't mind <laughs> swearing in English they're just like yeah great um but um yeah the what the fuck France is a show all about um and the English person's experience of living in France and just all those moments where the thing is about that is that actually Paul knows French very well. He speaks amazing French. It's like <laughs> he speaks so well that people don't realize he's English because uh, his pronunciation is so good. So it's one of his jokes is that he, he will say things with a perfect accent, but he'll make grammar mistakes. So people <laughs> don't realize that he's English. They just think he's an idiot. Um, <laughs> So anyway, yes. Yeah, so the, like, he gets away with with doing his show because he knows French so well, and French people just you know really appreciate it. But I mean, yeah, you can try getting in touch with him. I can I can send him a message and ask him. Maybe you can say Cathy is going to contact you if you are able. Do it, but ju I'll just say that. that, just that, and I I try to get contact. Okay, my sure. dear friends, this has been a long conversation, and it was supposed not to be, but <laughs> I have to say that I have enjoyed this so much I hope you have as well yes of course. and um, I am going to put all the contact details of you okay because I know look that you have a you know the podcast and you have a prime a prime I think it's a prime version Pre premium you can premium call it prime, is a like, word. 
like yeah, pre- my Amazon Prime for me. <laughs> oh, you know, I, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> it's fine. It's yeah. It's called Luke's English Podcast Premium, but probably just my website's the best way to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, but I would like to to share that also from Eric. You know, I always put your your link because you're doing such a great job. I I you know I've. I've become a better teacher because of Eric, you know? <laughs> Thank I'm you. not surprised. I'm not yeah. surprised you say that. <laughs> okay, my dear friends, I hope that you have enjoyed. Please look as Eric is already, you know, inside the chat box and he knows how we move. Please stay around, you know, stay around once in a while. Please share sure. something of yours. Okay. We, we always give some feedback, you know, and, and yeah. we interact with you. you it's, know, it's a, some... it's, uh, sorry to interrupt you. It's a lovely community. I mean, I just joined mm-hmm. this week and it's really, really nice. I like the way you moderate it. Everyone's very sweet. So just right. like hello to everyone in the chat box. It's really cool. Well done for, for managing such a nice facebook group yeah yeah, that is great (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. thank you and also it was just really nice to meet you it's really nice to talk to all of you uh roberta domi hello thank you for (laughs) listening to my podcast eric it's been really interesting listening to you i'm definitely going to check out your channel more and Catty, I'm going to listen to your podcast thank you so much (laughs) yeah and uh Catty, thank you for inviting me it's been really nice thanks thanks to you to all of you okay so enjoy your wednesday because uh, eric is almost over almost okay. time for me to go to yeah you have and Domi and roberta it was nice meeting you Cathy, so much thank, uh, you. thank you so much for having me on and luke i'll definitely check out your podcast it's a pleasure meeting you <laughs> nice one <laughs> okay my dear friends i'll let you go but thank you very much okay <laughs> thank, thank you thank you thank you all of you thank Bye-bye, you everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.